All right. Good evening. It is 5.03 p.m. So I call this meeting of the Waitley Planning Board to order. Uh, we got quite an agenda. I do want to start by um, officially welcoming J.D. Ross, our newest member of the Planning Board. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, J.D., in an era when um, civic engagement is uh, under attack or well, it's hard to get people to stand up and, and, and do service for their town. Uh, you have made the right decision in this case and stepped forward. So uh, we're very grateful. Uh, town of Waitley is very grateful that you're taking valuable time to support the planning board. So thank you very much. It means a lot. Um, uh, we will talk a little bit more towards the end of this meeting about um, additional efforts we're going to make recruiting since Tom is also sort of ending his term. Um, but we'll we'll get back to that. We have quite a bit to cover. Uh, we have, because we have a couple of guests, uh, Dan Hurwitz, um, I see somebody, I know, Dan, I've had some email from you. Uh, I see John Barone. Are yeah, you, John Barone, that's me. Are you here in the connection with Dan's piece or something else? Uh, I don't know, Dan. It's, uh, no, it's, it's, it's got to do with solar. Okay, very good. Um, well, okay, so what we're going to do, uh welcome everyone it's a, certainly a public meeting so what i want to do first because we have some guests and visitors who may not necessarily want to hang for our whole agenda let me start by um uh just having a little bit of interaction here uh with dan so dan we got an email from you, I, I sorry it came in very late. I sort of skimmed it. Um, I was a little confused at first, though. It sounds like you and somebody else are just want to submit an application for uh, an ANR, an approval not required. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, so then I believe that I sent you a pointer to a form on the Waitley website, an application form with instructions on how to do an ANR. I think you asked about the one thing that's relevant uh, here tonight that Dan asked that I made no promises or pledges about. Um, Dan asked whether the planning board will or will not meet at its regularly scheduled date and time uh, at our next meeting in December, which is on the calendar as December 27th, Wednesday the 27th. Now, traditionally, my experience, the board has had other priorities between Christmas and New Year's, and we often skip those meetings. Um, I believe there is. I move a, we postpone the meeting till the subsequent Wednesday. We do. Oh, we postpone it. So we'll have them. We often then have them early January. Is that correct, Judy? Well, we can. We can, we can. do it anytime. But since there is some interest in uh, having an ANR, if, if Mr. Hurwitz, if that fits him, that might be. Uh, Certainly would be better for my schedule. So That's, Dan, I think it is my preference not to have the regular planning board meeting on the 27th, but if the planning board, if we have a quorum willing to meet at least for the purposes of an ANR on say, what are we talking about? Wednesday, January 3rd, is that right? Um, so first I'll ask the members of the planning board uh, I seem to be available on my calendar for January 3rd. Others, let me go around. Judy? Yes. You're available. Sarah, it looks like you're available. Tom, January 3rd, Wednesday? I believe my term is up on January, December 31st. 
Okay, so you're now, if you if you need it for a quorum, I, I can. Well, we've already achieved a quorum. JD, I'm good. Yep. Okay, so um, so we'll plan then on, and I will make the appropriate um, notifications to town offices and so forth. So we will not meet on December 27th. We will meet on January 3rd. And so, Dan, do you have any questions for us? Is there anything you need to know about how to submit an ANR application? I think the, the instructions are pretty explicit, but now's your shot. Uh, fair enough. Well, thank you for uh, accommodating the schedule change. I appreciate it. And for what it's worth, I also actually would rather not meet that week. <laughs> um, so much appreciated. Um, uh, no real questions. I, I, I think that the application is pretty straightforward. I was going to, you know, if, if we hadn't rescheduled, was going to ask if we could come up with maybe some other other way to file that application. But this takes care of the um question that I had. And, uh, you know, I, I did notice this is kind of a non sequitur that you are going to be doing some recruiting efforts. So please uh, let me know. I'm, I'm kind of interested in joining some uh, a committee like this. Um, and so I'm, I'm curious how that plays out. All um, right. Well, hey. music <laughs> to our ears, Dan. <laughs> music to our ears. And look, I see a smile on Tom's face. So, Raise your right hand, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> That's I right. haven't even moved in yet, so it's going to need, it probably <laughs> no, no, needs no, to be a week right. or two. But, but um, uh, so yeah. we have a we have a deal. We have a deal to meet, and we're going to have an expectation that you're going to do everything you need to do so we can do the ANR on January third. Um, so go, and then I I have your email address, and I'll be in touch with you um, separately about. So are you moving into Waitley? Is that correct? I am, yes. My uh my fiance and I are moving in. Awesome. Okay. On to Laurel Mountain Road. That's a correct. Lovely part of town. Okay. So Dan H expect have a separate email from me after tonight's meeting. But as of now, um you're officially excused. Or if I mean these are such compelling like intensive meetings. You may not want to leave, but, <laughs> but it's really, it's totally your call. All right. I think I actually will stick around for a little while if that's all right. Hey, no problem. problem. The applicant has 20 days um, for you to endorse the ANR. I'm taking this from my Deerfield uh, days on the planning board. So, so you have 20 days as a town of Waitley to endorse his ANR. Once it is submitted, and it has Did not submit been submitted. No, he right? hasn't submitted it. I have not submitted. Okay, then I apologize. Yeah, it's not just they get to call and talk to us that they are maybe no, going to submit an A&R at some point, and then the clock starts ticking. Fill out the forms and pay the bill and all that jazz. That's sure. right. Gotcha. And actually, from a from a timing perspective, would it be helpful for me to submit it before the next meeting, or is that something I should admit at, yeah, submit at the meeting? No, if you can submit it ahead of time, then we can look it over. Okay, I'll do that then. At least, at least the digital copy. Sure. Yeah, I can. I can submit it a couple of weeks in advance. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you. All, all right. Um, so we're going to move on to the next. The this was an unscheduled item in our agenda, but um, so let me ask you, John. You're here uh, with a. Are you here related to the agenda item regarding solar or for another reason? No, for the agenda item, I, I wanted to uh, uh, I wanted to speak of the, to the planning board because uh, I tried to do some things a few years ago to make my project work. And when I saw that uh, the state possibly could be uh, giving more uh, leeway to the towns when it came, came, comes to solar, and I've been on the phone with the state about this, um, and I believe the state needs to take, uh, take uh, things away from the town when it comes to solar because of your 100-foot bylaw, which is a way to take away from the people 
to use their property the way that they want to use their property. And we're not talking a, a 50,000 acre piece of property. So I hear you. So I think given you're here to speak to an item that's on our agenda, why don't we, since it's not coming up, it's coming up soon, but not right away. I don't want to reorder the agenda. If no, you that's don't. fine, sir. Okay, sounds good, but we will get to it. Um, very good. So we're going to move to the first item on the, uh, the first regular item on the agenda. Uh, this has to do with uh, this, I want to update the board publicly about some activities that took place since our last public meeting in October. Um, and I don't want to give you the gory play-by-play, -play, but kind of hit the highlights for all of you. And there are some important um, kind of lessons learned and reminders. And, and some of the, and I definitely want some key points um, captured in our minutes. So the elevator or somewhat long elevator ride version of this is that towards the very end of October, I received a call as well as an email from the building inspector about a, uh, he was informing me that Nurse Farms on River Road was planning to construct a, what he described to me verbally as a 15 acre, one five acre greenhouse facility opposite their existing facility on River Road. Uh, and he, the building inspector, was contacting me to ask whether the site, whether the planning board uh, felt that this project should be subject to site plan review. Our zoning bylaws say on the one hand that anything, I, I, I didn't, basically bookmark the exact language here, but it basically says that any, oh yes, it says all uses allowed by right or special permit other than single family residences, uses and accessory structures, that's all together, single family residence uses and accessory structures shall require site plan review in accordance with the site plan provision of the chapter. So that's part one of this that gives the site, the planning board authorization to do site reviews very broadly. But then later in the uh, part of the bylaws that describes site plan reviews and the procedures for doing site plan review, there is an exemption. It says uh, that, um, I'm sorry, I just had the language. Yes, it says um, any residential, commercial, industrial, or in institutional use allowed by right or special permit in any district, including subdivisions, shall require site plan review, except that single family dwellings on individual lots, and, and this is, these are the three key words, and normal agricultural uses are exempt from site plan review, all right? So in effect, the building inspector was asking, is this 15 acre greenhouse project a normal agricultural use or not? And I said, God only knows, I'll get back to you. And then I, and then there was, you know, various emails, including to the planning board, I will, um, a copy of that email that I sent to the planning board did reach the build, uh, did reach our town administrator, who reminded me appropriately, and I'm grateful, um, by private email, that we should be, be careful about emailing to a quorum of other members of the planning board. That's in, potentially in violation of open meeting law. And we certainly should not be deliberating outside of a public meeting over email. And we should avoid even trying to skirt the, the letter of open meeting law by doing one-on-one -on -one deliberations. Right? But then he went on and we, over the course of several days, Brian and I had some conversations about this whole situation. 
Um, and it was made very clear that, you know, what I took away from conversations with Brian, who is, as you may know, he's an attorney. His specialty is land use law. Um, and he reminded me that the planning board is not authorized legally to make decisions of this kind. It is the building inspector's job to decide whether site review is or is not required per the zoning bylaws, all right? So that's not my call or any of your call. I can't tell the building inspector what to do. It is, according to our town administrator, it is solely the responsibility and the, and the legal authority in the hands of the building inspector to make those decisions, all right? And that if the building inspector makes a decision that the planning board disagrees with, then it is the process should be that the planning board files an objection, that there is a formal process for doing this. So this is giving you sort of a summary of where I was in this several days from the first call to from the building inspector to a communication I sent to the building inspector that said, hey, it's not my decision. We can't have a planning board meeting about this, a public meeting to discuss and deliberate this issue until the end of November. So it's really your call as building inspector about what to do. And the building inspector said, okay, then I'm going to direct nurse to seek site plan review. And that triggered another whole thing that led to a lot of conversations. And I had many calls with their nurses general counsel, um, you know, all understandable, but somewhat, somewhat, I wouldn't say confrontational, but somewhat tense, testy. <clears throat> They were, um, nurse had, was flying in contractors, you know, they were expecting to walk in and pull a building permit and be ready to go. And they were telling me that if they didn't have this building permit within, you know, a very short time, their project would be stopped until the spring and many hundreds of thousands of dollars were at stake. Were, But I basically kept saying, and I had, I had to say this over and over again, that it's not my call. It is not my decision. Claims were made that, um, and I, I'm taking the position that I do not believe these claims because I want to believe in better things, but claims were made that the prior. Um, I don't think I wouldn't go there. Yeah. Okay. So what I want I want to be clear. Thank you, Judy. I want to be clear both on the record and make it clear that none of us feel that we are in any way authorized on our own to tell anyone or advise anybody about interpretations of zoning bylaws. And I will not do that. Um, I will be very, very conservative when it comes to that. Um, and I, you know, I just want that to be clear, like there's a real lesson learned for me in all of this. Um, but where this left us was that we were rolling forward um, towards the end of that first long week of November towards doing a, a site plan review at tonight's meeting of the nurse uh, project. The, plan, the building inspector made a uh, a call, made a decision after further interactions with Nurse Farms to issue them a foundation only building permit at the time. Uh, that would, and that let them feel like their project, the key parts of their project could go forward while they were still awaiting completion of site plan review. And this is where matters stood at around the 8th or 9th of November. And all I can say is lots of hours of time that I had not anticipated. Um, I noticed that the Agriculture Commission was having their regular meeting on August 14th, the following Tuesday night. And again, not being able to deliberate with all of you, um, 
have a public meeting about this beforehand. I simply decided essentially as a Wheatley resident uh, to approach the Ag Commission to see if I could get on their calendar for that Tuesday night meeting and just have a discussion and seek their advice about this question. Do they think this sort, sort of thing is normal agricultural use? What's their position on site review of agricultural uses in general? Do they want us to stay away? The, you know, I just wanted to seek their opinion without at all suggesting I was there representing the planning board, which I most definitely was not, all right? Um, so, and in the interim, by the way, between the various calls I fielded with nurse and even with the building inspector, I was getting new information that, no, it's not a 15 acre greenhouse. It was a two and a half acre greenhouse, or maybe it was a two and a half acre greenhouse with plans to expand incrementally to a seven and a half acre greenhouse. Anyway, it was all very confusing. And at no time, because there was no formal site review, did I ever have the ability to look at any plans? All the detailed information was only flowing between nurse farms and the building inspector. Anyway, um, I get, so I also alerted nurse that I had made this outreach to the Ag Commission. Their general counsel wrote a detailed letter to the Ag Commission laying out their position that what they were doing was normal agricultural use and should be exempt from site review. Uh, I went to the Ag, Ag Commission meeting uh, and we ended up having a discussion for nearly an hour uh, at a meeting of the Ag Commission about this issue. They ultimately voted, and I don't necessarily disagree with their vote, uh, they voted unanimously that the, to, to recommend, because that's all they are, an advisory board. In fact, they technically are advisory to the select board, though, they also can be advisory to any border commission in the town, including the planning board. So they voted unanimously that it was a, they considered it to recommend, I think the language was to recommend that the nurse project be considered normal agricultural use. And that was very, that outcome was very quickly conveyed to the building inspector who then subsequently rescinded his decision directing nurse to seek site plan review. And that was in the, um, that was the, the building inspector indeed had that authority. And that is why tonight we are not doing site plan review of the nurse project. Um, things are left a little open with the Ag Commission uh, in that I said, well, you know, we still don't have a, quite a resolution of whether the Ag Commission feels like, it, are there any conditions, like if this were a 15 acre greenhouse, which is very unusual and large, it would seem, is that something that should be subject to site review? Should we revise this language in the bylaws from normal agricultural use to something else? Should we give it a definition, given that's not defined? The um, we didn't get there at that particular meeting. And I think it was left that there is a, uh, a future opportunity for us to engage with the Ag Commission around that topic. Uh, but they elected to just vote on the single issue and having taken up an hour of their time, that was enough for me. So that's the summary. Um, I welcome any comments, feedback and recommendations or we can simply note that you've all been informed of what took place. Thank you. We good? All right, very good. Um, so we're gonna move to the next agenda item, discussing the farm stand bylaw. I think I got the wording wrong, farm stand bylaw exemption. It's not a farm stand bylaw exemption. I think we're talking, Judy, about the, the the farm stand A and B uses in our table. No, no, no. Okay. It is I'm... the exemption. Oh, there is an exemption. Okay, please take the floor and summarize where we are with this. Okay, for JD's purposes, I raised this at the last meeting because 
because the farm stand does operate under this exemption for state law, it's part of the broader agricultural exemption that says that a farm stand can operate as long as there's a certain percentage of the product of what's sold that is produced on the farm or on land owned or rented by the owner. Um, and there's some other caveats. And I think everybody was delighted to see Smorowski's takeover from the Chesnicks. But when they started to be advertising that they were open for breakfast with breakfast sandwiches, I started to be concerned that maybe they weren't aware of this bylaw provision. So, or the fact that retail sales are, they, they are located in the agricultural residential district and retail sales are not permitted there. So I suggested that we write them a polite little letter pointing out to them that um, in fact, this is, this is the basis upon which they're allowed to have their business and wanted to remind them of these conditions. And Grant wasn't familiar with the exemption, so he requested that we defer it to this meeting. Um, I sent everybody a copy, and I hope, J.D., you got it, um, mm -hmm. a copy of, of the exemption itself earlier on. And then yesterday, I sent a draft letter that I hoped would save some discussion and maybe solve the problem and that we could decide whether to approve or not. I tried to keep it, you know, pleasant tone and we just wanted you to be aware of this. Okay. So. Um, I, I think everybody has should have that letter. Yeah, do we wanna screen share it? Um, at least so it's, uh, Sarah, are you? Oh, for, Dan, for Dan's benefit, it would certainly help. Yeah. Dan and John. Why don't we put that up? Um, so while, Sarah, you're going to work on getting that screen shared, beautiful, thank you. Um, um, when I, did I just hear a voice? Yeah, um, they contacted me this fall about helping them as a con some building contractor closing in the outside of it not trying to like just to stop the wind like tom's hot dogs has and i said i don't know about permitting with that and i s asked jim hawkins informally and he said it was you know the under the previous owner it was kind of stretched from a farm stand to more of a restaurant and now it's even more of that and is, is it a change of use because it, it, it's really a restaurant if you look at the dollars sold there are they selling more ice cream cones or more there's a corn I, I don't know it's a great place we love going there my kids love them they're good family good farm i like judy's point at the bottom that restaurant is allowed and if they want to pursue that they should um but i don't know that I, if i should have an opinion this matter because they've already asked me about doing work there and I've already inquired with the building inspector about that. I, I don't know ethically if I can do that. Yeah. I think yeah. you might have to recuse yourself just because of okay. their yeah. contacting you. It's one I'd of the dangers of being so good at your job. <laughs> yeah. They're they're very they're they're trying to like keep the wind out like Tom's hot dogs does. And but there becomes a when it becomes a change of use, you know, you, you have to buy bathroom facilities for the patrons there and um, yeah, I think a farm stand and a restaurant are two different things, and I think it's they pushing are. towards a restaurant. But so if they are enclosing it, then then they could just get a special permit. And yeah, I mean, I, not as a member of the planning board, I think they do a great job, and um, I, I love patronizing the place. So yeah, so I'll re I'll recuse myself from that. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So. I mean, I have a, a variety of thoughts and reactions and questions, but I'd, I'd like to see if 
uh, either Sarah or Tom have any thoughts on this matter? What is the um, what, what what is the outcome of this letter? What what do we expect to um, to happen? Do, do we do we call do we refer this to the building inspector? What, what what buttons are we pushing here? I guess is my question. I personally regarded it as just a a um a notice to the owners. Um, and one of the questions I had was who should be copied on it. Uh, I did talk to Jim Hawkins ab about um, the Chesnick's operation when they were there, and he agreed that they were probably in violation of the bylaw. But he didn't, since they kept insisting to him that they weren't, he didn't feel that he, there was much he could do about it. And I think yeah. we've dealt with this before that when somebody lies to the building inspector, he's fairly powerless to, to deal with it. Um, so I thought, you know, if they, if they really are expanding and, and really working to become a restaurant, then, then they should be official. And maybe this would prompt them to do that. But I didn't really intend it as a notice for the building inspector. So the application of the bylaw to this would be voluntary by the owners, by the owners? Yeah, I mean, we're in the same bind as, as Jim Hawkins. If they, if they want to claim that they really are doing 25% of, well, their stuff. Yeah. Or I guess in, if they're going to be year round, then it's the second condition that needs 50% from Massachusetts farms, um, an additional 50%. And then unless we go and do a big study, and sit and count their inventory or something, which we're obviously not going to do. I don't think there's anything we can do either. But, but I, you know, Sarah pointed out at the last meeting that probably in their in their business across the river they operate under different different zoning provisions and it would be helpful for them to know this sarah i like judy's letter it lays out what <clears throat> very much clarifies what their zone is and what's allowed and specifies that farm standby law. And it gives that out of the next step if they choose to do that. And yes, they can stretch the truth in various ways, but it presents what needs to be done or yeah, they can do with it what they want, but this is where this is what the zone is where they are. Thank you, Judy. Hmm. Well, I appreciate hearing those points of view. Um, I confess I have some mixed feelings about this whole situation, which I'll just share with you. And you can, um, I do feel like my role is more of the moderator of the, of the board versus, you know, um, a key decision maker. However, this letter will go out under, you know, my name and signature. So I'm, I'm thinking about Well, I'd be it. happy to sign it if you would prefer. Maybe, I mean, but I don't- I mean, I, it's, all, it's all open for- But discussion. here, at least hear me out. But certainly I, I, have, I have concerns about things in our bylaws, like the definitions of the farm stands A and B, that are, as far as I can tell, effectively unenforceable. Like without doing some kind of big auditing, I mean, if there were a lot of complaints about a business, I mean, I suppose we could, um, if this were a an operation that were creating a lot of grievances in town, then perhaps this kind of language gives the town and maybe that's the point of it. it. It 
gives the town the ability to take legal action and force them to say, I don't know, open up their books and, and all of this versus just simply saying that they're complying with it. Um, so so it, it, I sort of am bothered by this. I was also thinking in my mind about sort of questions for a board like ours of equity of how we act when we do such things. So here we're planning on writing a letter to this one farm stand. So I'm wondering, for example, I noticed, I hadn't thought about it until this, this issue, that just a little bit to the south of Simmers Creamy is a small farm stand that's been set up, I think by, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing the name, Bizyuski. All right, small, I mean, it's nothing like, I'm sure it's in, not comparable to the, the Simmers Creamy. However, I wonder if we're starting to set a precedent of writing letters to um, property owners in town or business owners in town, reminding them of their, um, you know, the applicable zoning bylaws that apply to them. I'm concerned about singling out or potentially being perceived as singling out Simmers Creamy when maybe right down the street is one that uh, is eligible for a similar email. Like we're now singling out Simmers because we've seen some signs about breakfast sandwiches, for example. Should we be it's a concern that we behave in an even-handed manner versus uh, create the perception that we're, yeah, just picking on particular organizations that we might, um, I don't know, have some issue with. So those were a couple of my concerns, like if we're gonna start- May I respond letters, to those? May I respond yeah, please, to those? Please, please respond. First, uh, this is not our bylaw, this is the state exemption that they're allowed under. We have no control over the wording. Okay. If that exemption weren't there, they would not be allowed to have it at all. So um, but I, I, can you, I, I do have a question because I'm I am confused on that point, Judy, because we have explicit entries in our table of use for farm stands A and B. And isn't it the case that they would be supposedly operating as such a farm stand or not? They would be operate, farm stands are allowed. Restaurants posing as farm stands are not allowed. Right. And the A and B, I think I communicated to you when we were talking, when you had concerns about Norse that, or when the building inspector had concerns about Norse, Norse that we are allowed to have site, those, the farm stand A and B just permit site plan review. Okay. For large farm stands. And we put that in the bylaw for new large farm stands. We put that in the bylaw for health and safety reasons. Okay. Um, because those are, are excluded from the exemption. I see. We okay. have in the past, I mean, my concern here is that if this is really allowed to progress and if it really becomes more um, focused as a restaurant, I mean, Chesnick's was selling corn aggressively. They were selling Christmas trees. They were selling pick your own flowers, um, a lot of that kind of stuff. I, I think it was probably you nowhere know, near 25%, but they had a lot more obvious, obvious um, farm produce. Um, if we don't make some sort of an effort, we have no way of stopping anybody else. Right. We have in the past, I mean, because we've created a precedent, if they can do it, why not? We right. have in the past had concerns about the uh, quote farm brewery, which was operating, which we felt was not 
a farm stand. They claim they were. So there is precedent. This is not the only item that only farm stand we've had concerns about. The smaller one that you mentioned on the street, as far as I can tell, is just selling their own produce. Yeah. Certainly all local produce. And they don't try to sell it. They're not saying open for ice cream on their sign. Yeah, yeah. And I realize so that the farm stands A and B are, like you say, applying to stands of 300 square feet or greater. So clearly the one to the south doesn't even qualify. Yeah, I mean, and, and we put them when when we passed that bylaw, it was because we thought that quite likely we were actually hoping that the Denio property might be something like Atkins Farms mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and would be a big farm stand. Or we got concerned that there was talk of big farm stands. And we realized we wouldn't have any control over things like drainage or parking, adequate parking, adequate lighting. Um, and so we passed that, we deliberately excluded smaller ones. And if you look at the approval from the attorney general, um, they made it clear that it would be only, as long as the site plan review were only for health and safety reasons, it would be okay. Okay. Um, So maybe riffing on Tom's question then, um, what are some desired outcomes we would like? We send a letter like this and, and actually, Sarah, could you just scroll it so like the, the main body of the letter is visible on screen? Yeah, thank you, perfect. Um, so if, if it's I true was, that I they- I think it's quite simple. I'm yeah. hoping they'll file for a special permit. Okay. But we're not necessarily opposed. I mean, I think we, it's a good business. It's not creating any, I mean, it's in character of the town and with, you know, small expansions, they're doing a service. They're supporting indirectly the activities going on at Hurley Park. Um, you know, I see teams going and getting food afterwards. So I don't think it's our goal to try to throw up roadblocks here, but I think what we're saying then is remind them about this and encourage them to seek a special permit to do what they're actually doing. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I agree. They're a benefit to the town, but it needs to be done correctly. It's a, not a, it was not a good example, the prior entity but that was also very beneficial to town. This needs to be done right from the beginning. Yeah, It's not that we're at all against it, but that is not a farm stand if they're serving that quantity of food yeah. that is not unprocessed items that are grown on their property or subsequent or prop that are not farmed. Those are very process highly processed foods. Right. Yeah, it's hard to believe just having been there any number of times that uh, they're, yeah, I mean, I can well imagine all the sandwiches and ice cream or the vast majority of what they're they're selling. Okay. Um, so again, we're one of the issues we're going to run into here is we send this letter, they, they just toss it in the trash and the building inspector is like, I mean, I'm not, I don't mean to say, I don't mean to apply, especially since we're here in a public meeting being recorded. I don't want to suggest that they would be irresponsible or um, um, or not take this seriously. Um, however, if they didn't seek a special permit and we felt that they should, then we would have to, again, be pressuring the building inspector to take action. Is that a fair statement, Judy? I don't know. Um, that's another step. I regard this as a public service. Okay. Okay. And if that's not the tone that comes across, then I'd appreciate suggestions. I tried to write it in a non-threatening manner. Okay. We think you need to know this. And I think they do. Okay. Um, so and, what I'd like... and then I would suggest that we talk, talk about who the who the CCs should be. Um, 
So go ahead and, and scroll we, up so we can see this that, that part of the letter, please, the CCs. Who you've originally drafted. Well, it's it's Brian Jim Hawkins okay. and the CBA. If okay. um right. if okay, that's good. You can if those aren't appropriate and maybe Jim Hawkins in, in conjunction with this. Well, he's aware too. I I I think I think it's important that they understand what they do after that is is another discussion if 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 they don't respond. But it sounds to me as though you know if if they've already talked to JD about um, enclosing things a bit more that they they probably would qualify as a need in restaurant. Okay. So I would suggest adding the Agriculture Commission to the CC. I sense, feel, hope, wish after my most recent visit for the first time with the Ag Commission that maybe having some open lines of communication and thought, you know, it fit, felt to me like I feel like many of the boards and commissions in the uh, in Waitley are somewhat stovepiped, and maybe a better word in the case of the Ag Commission would be siloed, um, and and fostering more dialogue between them and us would be good. So I would recommend adding the Ag Commission since it is a farm stand, um, for what that's worth. Uh, I would ask the question of. Should it should we explicitly CC the select board, or is it merely enough to CC the town administrator? I don't see any point in CCing the select board, but if you can, I think they don't normally get into the details of application of zoning bylaws. Or zoning provision. Yeah, I mean, only to the extent that it's, we think that the select board ought to be aware of such potential concerns, but it could be sufficient that we make Brian aware and he will decide what needs to be elevated to the select board's attention. So I'm fine with leaving the select board off the explicit CC list. And I think I'm comfortable signing a letter as planning board chair. Uh, what I would like to propose is a motion and vote to send the letter with the provision that I be allowed to um, make some minor revisions if I see, if I feel it necessary with Judy's concurrence, just so I feel comfortable sending this out with my signature. That's a rather wordy request, but rather than having to do a, a revision and bring this up at a future meeting, I'm wondering if we could just have a motion and vote on that. I'd like a little latitude for editing, but with Judy's you know, in a collaborative spirit with Judy. Fine with me. Judy, why don't you make that motion? I move that we send the letter, uh, the draft letter I sent yesterday um, with the addition of the Ag Commission as a CC and that uh, Brant and Brant have the latitude to make minor editorial decisions or changes. Motion's been made, second? I'll second it. Sarah has seconded it. Um, all in favor, roll call vote, either by voice or by raise of hand. Uh, JD, you're accused. So, Judy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Sarah? Yes. And I'm yes as well. So it passes um, four, 
with a four, four to zero with one recusal. Okay, thank you. Um, this will get done before next meeting. Uh, we'll move on to the next item on our agenda. Thank you. Okay, so um, discuss- Sarah, can you stop sharing? Yeah, you can stop sharing. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, thank you. Okay, so now we're on to the agenda item regarding local control of large scale solar projects. So what I'd like to do uh, is have Judy update us about the, the article and so forth and her recommendation. And then I'll uh, give John the floor to share his point of view and we can have a discussion decision about what we're going to do. All right, Judy. Okay, um, I sent around an article from the recorder about uh, a bill that has been filed with the state legislature that would remove a, a sentence in another section of Mass General Law 40A, Section 3, that has to do with solar exemptions. And that basically says that a local municipality may not unreasonably regulate uh, solar facilities. This provision was put into the law in the mid eighties. At that point, um, solar facilities were simply household, essentially roof mounted ones, I think, but anyway, uh, household solar facilities that the intent, I believe, was to stop uh, NIMBY people saying, I don't want that ugly thing on the house next to me. But um, obviously, since that time, the world has changed. There are large uh, utility type solar projects, ground based. We have at least five of them in Whiteley. Um, we passed a bylaw, I think now 12 years ago. Oh, I sh there's a step in between. The Department of Energy, when large scale ground mounted solar facilities started to be developed, developed a model bylaw for towns and municipalities to adopt. And their supposition was at the time that indeed this provision had been intended for small household solar projects. So they drafted a model bylaw that applied to larger ones. And, and I think over 250 watts or a certain size was involved. Um, we drafted our bylaw on that using that model template, it was approved by the Attorney General with the qualification that we needed to be aware of the unreasonably regulate provision. provision. In the last couple of years, uh, there was a court case that found that a town, and I've forgotten which one. Um, was it Shootsbury? Had, no, that's, yeah, that's, recent. that's more recent. Had violated their, um, this unreasonable provision by essentially not allowing solar at all. They found that their, their um, bylaw was so restrictive that there were only a couple of tiny places in the whole, whole town you could have a have a solar facility. Um, the wording on that was vague, as is the case in many of these situations when, when you've got a technical kind of thing. And it's led to some other interesting problems. Um, Brant mentioned Shootsbury. They drafted a solar bylaw or modified theirs in a way that they thought was perfectly consistent 
with the court case and the attorney general rejected it. And it's not clear that the attorney general knew the had it had good information about Shisbury's situation and the number of districts they had and and the fact that it really did permit quite a quite quite uh, extensive solar facilities. Um, there's also in recent a couple of recent instances there was a letter in the Gazette the other day that implied that the there is a large battery, standalone battery solar, battery storage facility that's been proposed for Wendell. It's 11 acres and it has 25 foot tall walls around it. And evidently they, the, the town is opposing it. And according to this letter, and I can't confirm it any other place, the applicants for that are suing on the basis of this unreasonably regulate the solar um, so anyway this some aren't working i'm on zoom this bill would take out the unreasonably regulate provision and basically turn back control for solar facilities to the town in the same way that we can regulate any other industry except for farming. Um, this solar applies only to, it's the only um, business, um, certainly the only utility that is treated this way. And I think, you know, it seems to me that we pride ourselves on trying to do a good job of regulating. John would disagree, but um, he has every right. Oh, yeah, um, I so definitely five. disagree. There's no doubt about that, yeah. Miss Judy Markland. So I would, my proposal is that we write a letter to our legislators in support of this bill and also encourage the select board to. So why don't we do this? Um, why don't we do that as a formal, I was about to say, well, all right, I'm not going to do this as a formal motion just yet. We'll have a conversation about it. Um, and, uh, but, uh, but if we're going to do this, then there would need to be a formal motion to write such a letter or, you know, future meeting where we have a draft letter uh, that we discuss and, and vote upon. So what I'll do now is, um, since John's been patient in uh, listening to a lot of other pl planning board business, I'd like to give you the opportunity to share your point of view. So what we're talking about, just to clarify, is uh, the planning board, we're having a, a preliminary conversation about whether the planning board would write a letter uh, and send it to the state. Is that right, Judy? No, to our state representative and our state senator. To our state representative and our state senator supporting the revision to the Zoning Act that, that, that would have the effect of giving local municipalities like Waitley more power to regulate solar facilities. So that's what we're discussing. Uh, so, John, you've got okay, the floor. Okay, I have the floor, I, I'd be happy to speak. So I've been in contact with the state legislature and because of the town of Waitley's actions, I've actually asked the legislature to take power away from the townships with solar production. Uh, because the town of Waitley's uh, bylaws with the solar, specifically the setbacks, are unreasonable. They were they're restrictive. They discourage solar production in the state of Massachusetts, which is a 
absolute necessity, no different than farming. Our energy production is just as important as food production in this state. Uh, so let me let me go here. All right, so you got Timmy Norris, uh, a 15-acre greenhouse deal going on there. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but how is a 15-acre greenhouse deal different than solar farming? Okay, there's across from PTNS, a guy that I, I knew way back when, there, there's like a trucking company going on there, which which was not zoned for that. But that was okay. I wanted to simply put in a small a small solar system on my property just north of Sandy Lane, and I asked for for help legally with a um, zoning change in a specific industrial district. And it was not allowed. So I want to ask each and every member, how does 100 foot setback, how is that, how does that make people safer, better, et cetera, et cetera, than a 20 foot setback? Can, can anybody answer that question? Let's start with Judy. Judy, can you answer that question? So hold on. Let me just, I hear you. Let me just intervene just because it's a different conversation that you're proposing having. Um, that is I, to say- It's really well, not, my friend, but I'll let you speak. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. the chair. Well, I think the question that we're discussing right now is whether the planning board would take an action to support this change to, to, the, uh, to the legislation. I think what you're bringing up is a question that we've discussed before in the context of your application and your proposal to revise the zoning bylaws. Um, and I mean, that's a different conversation. Uh, I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree or disagree with whether we have that conversation, but it's not what we're, I mean, the, the real topic for tonight is whether the planning board feels like we should send a letter to the our state representatives expressing our support for giving municipalities more power to regulate. And I hear very clearly you saying that you take the opposite point of view and you feel that Waitley zoning bylaws had a specific adverse impact on you. And I think that's, you know, we can, we can hear that and note that and consider that as part of our decision making about whether we want to whether we believe we do or do not have enough power to regulate. Uh, I mean, I think that if we want to, you know, we could have a separate conversation at a future meeting about those setbacks. Uh, and there is, as you may recall, there was a rather lengthy, to my memory, discussion about the history in Waitley behind the changes that were made to our solar bylaws that explicitly all, increased those setbacks. It all comes down to Chet Robleski's project. That's what it all comes down to. And people that didn't want to see Chet Robleski, I don't believe Chet Robleski's project was a proper project. Mm -hmm. I will agree with that. But by changing those setbacks to 100 feet, I, I want to know how in in the mindset of the board, how does 100 feet make people safer than let's say 20 feet front, side and back? How does it make people safer? How, because quite frankly, it's doing exactly the opposite of what is, is what was asked for by the Baker administration, now the Moore Healy administration, because now this 100 foot, so if I have a two acre project, the project doubles because of the setbacks. So you have basically, and you know what? I could be off plus or minus a couple square feet, whatever. But basically that entire project, now there's 50% of it that needs to be maintained using fossil fuels and blah, 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 blah. So it's doing the exact opposite of what the, state mandate is for this and i understand what you're saying you're saying okay should we uh uh 
you know, send a thing, we should have more control. The answer is no, the town should not have more control. And I have been hard on the state legislature about this because of my specific issue. Does that make sense to the board? It, I, I would say, at least speaking personally, I hear your concern. Um, I remember doing a little bit of preliminary looking around at other um, area bylaws and setbacks that may apply to solar. Um, but I think the board at the time decided that we were not going to undertake any comprehensive revision to the setbacks, given that only a few years earlier, the setbacks had been increased. Um, I would be open, not tonight, but if you wanted to come back before the board with some hard data about setbacks used in other cities and towns and make the case that the Waitley bylaws are um, unreasonable, then I think that's a fair case to make. Right now, we don't, we tend to make our decisions based on advocacy from or requests from members of our own community. So if you want to advocate for that, with data. my family's been paying taxes on this property for over 80 years. And I had an op opportunity to, to, pay, to, to put something together that would pay the pa taxes and maybe be able to buy a freaking hamburger at Tom's Hot Dogs. Mm -hmm. And now it's not going to happen because of the setbacks. So, you know, you, you tell me all this, but I want to know how 100 feet is safer than 20 feet or 25 feet whatever you pick the number how does it how does it it's a backdoor way it's an unreasonable way to restrict and discourage solar bottom line and they they are very aware of that in the state legislature and town of Waitley's name is a first on the list with me and hopefully they figure this out because the mom and pop that has the non-conforming lot Okay, or maybe uh, the guy that's got four or five acres in back of his house, he wants to throw up 0.5 megawatts. Uh, so everything is spread out. No, the way that everybody's doing things, not only Waitley, but every every other township, they're just leaving it open to mega corporations that can afford to put up these huge facilities. And I'm not for these huge facilities. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not for cutting down 30 acres of forest land to put up a solar. But mom and pop have a couple acres. Maybe they could put a few bucks in their pockets to help pay the taxes. This is where I'm at. I've had this property in the family for over 80 years. And I gave the town of Waitley a way around it. And it wasn't spot zoning. Uh, Judy Marklin said it was spot zoning, so we can't do it. No, it wasn't. It was an entire zoning district. All right. It, well, yeah. I'm going to ask respectfully. I think, John, you've very articulately have and I, thoroughly. Have I made my point? That's I all think I think you have made your point. And it's a point that I think at the moment we're at a place where we have to agree to disagree while not agreeing that this is the last that we'll talk about this. But I think we have to agree since it's now 6.15 and we have other things on our agenda that we're going to close this topic and move on. Can All you right. live so with that, John? The best thing I ever did was resign from the planning board in Deerfield. <laughs> That was the best decision ever made. Well, you know, we I do feel we owe everybody a chance to make their voices heard. And I hope you feel you've had that chance. I just can't allow you to have an unlimited floor tonight. No, I understand that. But I, I just want you guys to think about 
how does 100 feet, how does that make it safer, better, et cetera, et cetera? For the, it doesn't. I, I, I definitely hear you. And I, as a member of the Appalachian Mountain Club, I see both sides of this. I've seen issues where solar companies have come in and threaten towns and clear cut forest land and created all kinds of drainage and well, erosion that, issues. And, and that, that stuff needs to be stopped. And I agree yeah. with you. So I feel that I do, as a believer in natural resources, uh, want to have some local control. But at the same time, I do understand that sometimes local control prevents uh, good things and important things at a society's level from being done. So I'm, I'm not unpersuaded by the points that you're making, but we're not going to talk about them anymore tonight. All right. Would you All like right? to hear my theory on what should happen? Okay. So the, the state, uh, according to the state, they're going to make $25,000, uh, 25,000 Watts at small scale, which I think is a good size. And then I think that it should be like, say 25,000 to one megawatt. Okay, so let's call that a, all right, so the 25,000 watt, the homeowner one, like I have- John, John, please, I don't really want to have to cut you off. Well, you can cut me off. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm relatively new in this position, but I do know how to cut people off. I really appreciate you're spending your, your time. I hear what you're saying. But I'm going to just kindly ask that you let us move on. Move on, my friend. Okay. Have a, thank you, John. I appreciate it. Okay. So we're... Um, hey, unless... Can I ask a question, please? Oh, yes, please, J.D. Grant, as far as a setback, why wouldn't that be the purview of the Zoning Board of Appeals for an appeal of a setback? Why is it the Planning Board? Well, that I... That is... Yes. We I had the option to appeal yeah. to ask for a variance. Okay. And I right. think. But if I ask for a variance and I, I get denied, there's a two year window. It's yeah. the planning board that makes that makes the. How do Sets the, we set the setbacks and that it would have been. They, there they is make the law, it needs to go in front of the town. Um, but the, 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 piece, the piece that JD is missing is that John submitted a, a bylaw change. Okay. For a specific reduce, zone. Reduce yes. the setback only in the industrial. Okay. Commercial. Industrial, the, the industrial CI. district. The, the CI. And okay. planning board recommended against it. He could still have taken it to town meeting. And opted not to. Okay. Yeah, there's there's definitely risk. So because time is ticking and there are other things I want us to get to tonight, what I'd like to propose, Judy, if you're okay with this, is that you draft a letter. Well, first I think we need to have some discussion from the other planning board members, which yeah. hasn't happened yet. Maybe, maybe well, if nobody is at least bit interested in doing this then there's no point in my drafting a letter. Yeah, fair enough. I was going to propose you draft the letter and that our next- My letters are so convincing it. that, well, I'm happy to do that. If, yeah, if, well, if maybe I'll just add, how about that. this? Do, do any of JD or Tom or Sarah feel strongly against the planning board writing or sending such a letter? My own personal view is I'd like to see a letter and I, I'm, I haven't made up my mind tonight. I oh, don't. Uh, I don't oppose a letter. Um, I think the, in, in all matters in the town, we need to have forward progress on things and we can't let it get out of hand. So I certainly don't want to hinder any kind of solar project, but also be able to add a little, little control if we need to. So I don't have a problem with a letter. Huh. Um, I, I, well, if I if I were returning, um, I'd like to see a letter as a basis for conversation, as a, something to, to bounce our conversation off of. Sarah? 
you're muted, but I saw sort of positive facial expressions. <laughs> I would like to see a letter. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll do. Judy, you've got the action. We will put that on our agenda for next meeting. Hello. Okay. So the next item on our agenda has to do with um, zoning revision priorities informed by the housing production plan. So, um, and this I'm gonna this or I'm gonna go just heads up, JD. This is gonna lead to a question to you. Yeah. But the background is that yeah, I was watching uh, there, and I did circulate this to the board tonight. Mm -hmm. We have an approved housing production plan with any number of recommendations, and I'm I'm the I'm I'm the representative to the Waitley Housing Committee from the planning board. And mm -hmm. I've been in conversation. I would say the we're, you know, both sides, the housing committee and on our side, the planning board are a little, um, well, and maybe I'll, I'll just speak for myself, but I feel like we're a little um, unclear about what's the best strategy moving forward. There have been recommendations. Sorry, Brad, I thought we had voted. Well, there, yeah, we were. But here's the thing about the open space cluster cluster bylaw, which I've looked at. Let me just give you, I, I feel like whatever we do at the moment and consider um, is not necessarily strongly informed by any advice about what will really move the needle in town about um, increased housing production. And it occurs to me that having someone such as yourself, who is a builder and perhaps knows others in the building community, I've been thinking about, well, yes, we can consider and talk tonight about our open space cluster bylaw and how we can tweak it or, about the ADU provisions that we've kind of tabled because we don't think adding more support for ADUs is gonna be helpful. Again, we can have these conversations, but I feel like none of us really know, or I'll, of course I'll say, I do not know what is really holding back the development of affordable housing or just housing in general in the town of Waitley. And I don't, I'm not confident as much as I respect other my fellow members on the board that tweaks to our zoning bylaws are going to move the needle unless I'm hearing from builders that if you that these are the things that are stopping development. So well, maybe I, it would be helpful if we told JD about the among those options, the couple that we had decided to prioritize and work on. Sure. And then he could then go on and see if there were others that might be more effective. But if we start there, maybe we'll save a little time. Um, we had, of that list, we picked two that we thought might be effective and that we could reasonably have some background on by the time of town meeting. One was to, to re-examine the incentives in the cluster bylaw to see whether they were adequate or not. And I envisioned when we were doing that, that we would ask FERCOG to do a source or Sylvie to do a study of what other towns might have. I see you, John. Keep, keep going, Judy. I just wanted John to know I see his hand up. And the other, the other one was a, a bylaw provision that's modeled, I think would be unique to Whateley probably, but modeled after the one we did for the um, historic buildings in town that would allow for some flexibility in or waiving some of the dimensional requirements for building a house, perhaps allowing it on a smaller lot or allowing more units per per lot, that kind of thing, as long as it was de dedicated to affordable housing. I and would share my screen, but page 89 
didn't download correctly. And I'm only able to see part of it. And that's a very important page. Page 89 of the zoning bylaws? No, 89 of the HPP. <clears throat> oh, right, right. So those those were the two we, we yeah. um, and that's opted to work the, on. Yeah, that's the strategy options. I can and get there. I don't know if JD's had time to even. I haven't. I do have some some uh, some thoughts though. So, the biggest hindrances to development in Waitley right now is the huge lot sizes and frontages and stuff like that. The buildable land that's available, there's not very much of it, and the easy land to build up on gets snatched up quickly and, and is gone. The Pine Plains Estates where Brant lives, we're building there right now. There's only one lot left that's already been sold. All the other lots are up country. There's wetlands, there's trees, there's mountainsides. You try to get a septic to work. There's no municipal water system in West Waitley. It's very expensive. To move to Waitley, you need to be a very affluent person. You know, the, the houses start at six or seven hundred thousand dollars to build a house right now, and that's not a very big house. So we're pushing out young families. They just can't afford to build here. Um, we can't control the lots are available. We can't control the steepness and stuff. But Waitley also doesn't allow, doesn't easily allow two five million units need to be owner occupied. Um, how about a, a townhouse? Not affordable housing, but a, a, a two unit townhouse for the seniors to move in. My mother needs a place to live soon. Um, it's not easy to, to get a, an accessory apartment in Waitley. You have to basically build a garage, live above it while you're building your house and then move into your house after you build it and have the illegal apartment. It's, it's very difficult. You don't see a lot of multifamily dwellings going in lately at all. I think the ADUs, a lot of those will be good, but they're going to be hindered by Title V because they're not going to be able to meet the Title V requirements with the, the existing septic systems. You can't like have a house that's just designed for it and then add a whole other dwelling to it and use that same septic system. So they're going to be hindered by, by Title V big time. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, multifamily dwelling allowing that. So you think lot sizes and making more provisions for multifamily housing will would, would be a significant change that would in, increase opportunities for development? Absolutely, because you take a $800,000 house as a two, fam, two unit townhouse, um, nice one, a side by side, that now a family can afford to move in at four hundred thousand, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand to buy it outright in their condos. Um, that would that would increase housing in Waitley tremendously, allowing that easily. So, so would you? So I would. I, I would develop some two families in Waitley, but they need to be owner occupied. No, a duplex is allowed. It was owner occupied? That's what I thought it was, but I could be wrong. No. We approve one down on uh, Christian Lane. Okay. Uh, there's one across the street from my house, and that was owner occupied. It was a mother and daughter that moved in. No, it doesn't have to be. <clears throat> okay. An, an a, a, accessory ADU has to be owner occupied, but, but a two family house doesn't have to be. Okay. You need a special permit, I think, but I'm not even sure of that. You need site plan review. My neighbor across the street had to go to the zoning board for permission from the zoning board yeah. for the family. So, so let me just see, because since John did have his hand up, I'd like to see what you wanted to share your thoughts about housing and housing obstacles or affordable housing obstacles in Waitley. Oh, you are muted. Yep, you are muted. Yep, yep, yep. I can't read your hands. Can't read your lips. Unmute. <laughs> Let's see if I can, I don't know if I can unmute him. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. All right. So this this goes back to, it, unfortunately, to the size, the, 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 the width of the setbacks. Because on my particular piece of property, my ultimate goal would be to be 
uh, put like a, a half a mag of solar in the back part and still have enough room to put some housing, whether it be affordable or other. But with those setbacks, I cannot do that. Maybe mm -hmm. I could buy two hamburgers versus one at Tom's Hot Dog Stand. So, okay, you get it. I, so I the dimensional requirements is the correct. Sure. Okay. Good. Thank you, John. So, um, Brent, another point that oh, good. Thanks, John. You no, know, it, it all it 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 all comes. Everything comes together. I mean, it's it's yeah. There, okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. done. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, John. JD. Our building, our building codes are very comprehensive in what the requirements are for multifamily dwellings. So say you wanted to partition off part of your house for an in-law to live in or create an accessory apartment at your house. Our building codes govern that very, very well. What we have to do for fire separation assemblies and means of egress and all of that. Very, very well done. But it's just the extra hindrance from making it difficult to put in a multifamily dwelling in Whaley, taking your big house and carving up a place for your mother to live in. Um, the building code handles all the other part of it. It's just allowing that we're adding a step that is, is it's unnecessary. Other, other towns allow two family dwellings in a residential zone without having to go through the steps of special permit from the zoning board. Well, I'm not sure, but I think the state has taken control of that very recently. When it comes to accessory housing, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I've been hearing chit chat about that. It, they it, changed it so the the you don't need a two thirds vote at town meeting. So what? By not making it easy, by 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 hindering the ability to apply for a permit for a two family dwelling. What you've done is you force people to do it illegally. So now you have illegal apartments that don't have the proper smoke detectors, that don't have the proper egress, that don't have the proper um, sanitation facilities, they don't have the proper egress windows. And you've got, there's a whole bunch of houses in town with illegal apartments that that the, the town quote unquote doesn't know about, but that they're, they're there, that they're there. So by making it easy to apply for a permit for a two family, we're actually saving lives. Hmm. So, okay. so I, I would I would be I would be I would be I in trouble every year in winter season when we have fires and there's a loss of life because smoke detectors don't work. And I feel it's a part of the fire department, building department, the building community. We let people down when you see in the coldest night of the year there's a fire and someone loses their life in it because a smoke detector didn't work or there wasn't a door big enough to get out or the egress window wasn't big enough. It happens every every year because smoke detectors didn't work. Mm -hmm. So part of buying a building permit for these two family dwellings is that we make sure everything is compliant in the case of emergency. And we don't, and if you're making obstacles to getting those permits, then you're going to have people doing it without compliance and we're going to have deaths. It's going to happen. Much like the illegal okay. pellet stoves I see and wood stoves and all that stuff. It's so just- So the special permit is the obstacle. Yeah. Encourage people to pull, pull a permit. You want to add a- Add an in-law suite or a, for your child or your adult or your cousin or your aunt or something. Yeah, come on down, pull, pull building in, permit to do it. And meet just in an existing home. home. Existing home, yeah. Or if it's a detox structure, I guess it's part of an ADU. But if you need to add an accessory, an accessory to your building, an accessory dwelling to your building, an in-law suite, something like that, make it easy to do that. Okay. And we're going to save lives because you're going to do it illegally and people are going to die. That's just my two cents on that. No, I appreciate it. Really do. It's why we are glad to have somebody that brings your particular set of knowledge and skill to the board. Thank you. Um, where I think we need to go, I mean, I definitely see this as a project, as I've learned, the the Sunderland made some amazing strides in affordable housing, but there was some luck and it took eight or nine years to happen. So, I mean, I don't want this to take as long in Waitley, but I think JD, what I'd like to do and maybe do this, I want to, I am going to be talking to Catherine, uh, the chair of the housing committee on Friday, but I, I think we want to start. <coughs> 
working on some specific concepts for changes. And of course, there were some recommendations in the housing production plan related to multifamily dwellings mm -hmm. uh, that I think we, and maybe this was on the housing committee side, set to a lower priority, feeling that there would be more um, um, hesitance or reluctance among Waitley citizens to approve such changes. I mean, just an intuition that uh, that people may feel like at it, making it more possible for there to be multifamily dwellings in Waitley would so substantially impact the character of the town that it would get voted down at town meeting. So we are a little hesitant to lead with that, but we don't know, honestly. You know, I tend to feel like Waitley is, Waitley spiritually is strongly in favor of more affordable housing as long as nothing ever changes. Yeah, there's a lot of really big houses in Waitley that you could, they could divvy up and subdivide the space. Same number of bedrooms in the house, but, you know, make a place for grandma to live. Yeah, yeah. And then Sunderland, my friend just bought a house over there. He has a big house and he wanted to create a suite for his mother to live in. It's not allowed okay. because Sunderland doesn't want people turning big houses into apartment houses for UMass students. I, I am curious, JD, if you think that we could get other members of the building and developer community to say, come to future town meetings or hold some Perhaps. kind of public event to get, again, a variety of input, or you might even call it testimony mm -hmm. about what we can and should be doing in Waitley to improve and increase opportunities for affordable. Yeah, I'm listening to Zoom. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, as a builder, to build, it's very easy to get permission to build in Waitley. Generally speaking, the Conservation Commission is very responsive. The building inspector turns things around very quickly. Highway department turns things around very quickly. The Foothills Health District, they're getting better. They a lot of problems there, but they're getting better. It's very easy to get permission to build. There's no hindrances in that. As opposed to other towns in Northampton, it took eight months to get permission to put a driveway in. Mm -hmm. uh, Disease that that's not the problem. Okay. It's just that it's so the, the lot sizes are so big, tough land to build on, and it's tough to build multifamily dwellings. It's not easy. Or subdivide an existing dwelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I very much having witnessed how hard it is, how much work the board, the volunteers of this board put into getting things to town meeting, um, and then maybe not having them pass or you know, I do not want to waste a lot of time and energy on tweaking things. Like, it still bothers me that we have an open space cluster development provision in the bylaw that has never been used. And, and the idea that we'll go tweak it um, and change density bonuses, or it's got this complicated scheme I've been studying about points and like that somehow we're going to fix that and that's going to change, you know, bring in a lot of development. I'm just say I'm skeptical. I would feel and, so much more confident if I had developers telling me, these are the things that are preventing me from at, at whatever profit I need to meet, um, develop and, and provide affordable housing. We looked at development and the cost of the road Went in was double than what it was when Robolowski did his. Just inflation. The I mean, cost I mean, of what was? Putting the road and developing it. The cost oh, of it, it doubled. So it made it not financially feasible. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I want to talk to you more outside of a, a, a public meeting um, and start seeing if we can gel some specific proposals. I mean, Judy, I am i don't know how much more time we want to spend on this tonight. I mean, I think spending 10, 15 minutes per meeting 
I don't know if you're if you have a specific recommendation you want to pursue about a change to the open space cluster development bio. Like I say, I'm, my intuition is that that's not where we're going to get the bang for the buck. But I I I pledge to keep an, an open mind on that. Well, it was designed to allow development to grow compactly. Yeah. But and no one's as, done it. As you no yourself one's done pointed it. out that, um, <laughs> JD, it's the outback lands that are available and the big lots. Um, and that was intended to be the way to do that. Um, rather than having sprawl. Yeah. It's also a way to generate more open space. And the way the way those things work is entirely density. I mean, that's the name of the game. The more units you can put on the space, the better you are. Mm -hmm. um, so those made sense or they were the ones recommended at the time. Maybe things have changed. Um, the fact that we don't have sewers changes the economics some quite a bit. Um, so I don't see any harm in trying to do some research to find out. It does seem like one thing we could do fairly easily in, in the time of it allowed. But and, so you know, my, 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 my faith is on the other the other one anyway, the flexible, the the more flexible dimension by law, I think would be very useful for lately. But so here's but I think question. we have discussed it enough. If you're going to take it back to the housing committee yeah, anyway, I am going to. Then, and then I, so, I think we we've probably more than spun our wheels here. Although yeah. I am very much appreciate JD's comments. Yeah. What I'd like to ask JD to do is two things, if you will, outside of this meeting. Mm -hmm. One, um, look at the open space cluster development bylaw in, and and share your feedback about like, like, again, the issue is it's there and it's never been used. So you might be able to share a perspective on why that might be that I would find, or like if it were changed in such and such a way, it might be actually used instead of not. Mm -hmm. And two, my second request, I actually have three requests of you. You know, it's so great to have you on the board and I'm just giving you homework. But I, I, I don't think this is really a heavy lift. No. Nope. The second ask is that you look at, look at the bylaws through the lens of this where what kinds of changes might we consider regard that would make more two family or multi ha family housing um, possible all right I mean again Judy seems to suggest that maybe you there might have been a misunderstanding about what our bylaws do or don't allow and I, I can't say I can speak to that right here now myself either but but since you brought up this I, this issue, I'd like you to look at our bylaws and see if sure. you have some specific recommendations. And then right. set my third ask, I do feel like if my fellow board members will, will indulge me on this, if you were, UJD were to give me contact information for peers of yours in the building community, that I might reach out to in my capacity as chair of the Waitley Planning Board and invite them to join a future meeting and take a few questions along similar lines. Like I'd like to hear multiple perspectives. If you think you're willing There's and able to, to do that. And you know, and maybe this is something that doesn't happen at the planning board. Maybe we move this over to the housing committee. Um, I was going to say I would suggest that be a special joint meeting. Yeah, 
Yeah, like it could be that we do it as a special event and invite several, okay. you know, well-regarded developers who have a chance to share their point of view on what Waitley's doing right or wrong in this area and how they could be part of a solution to our affordable housing problem if we would only do certain things to make it more appealing to them. Okay. Um, and then it's up to us to decide and our and the and everyone else in Waitley at an annual town meeting to decide what they're willing to do or not, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Can we close on this subject for tonight? Well, I got one last thing to say before I uh, sign off. I've got okay. a great site in Waitley that could help with affordable housing, get a little <laughs> solar in, the whole deal. Great. Great. great Subsidized housing. And we oh, need it's, it's awesome. All right. Well, I'll keep you on the list, John. I do. All right. We'll talk Thanks to you later. For Thanks for taking time, even if you necessarily didn't get everything well, you wanted. No, no. Thank you for listening to me. That's all I asked for was somebody listen to me. That's all. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. All right. Good night. All right. So um, next item. These are sort of questions. Uh, are doing on time? We're still, we still have a few minutes. Um, well, okay. I think what I'm going to do um, is... Okay, who's the, what was that I was hearing? Okay. I muted it. Okay, very good. I think what I'd like to do in the interest of time is um, defer the discussion of other board projects and priorities to our January meeting. Um, since that sounds like it'll only be, or mostly be just about um, the ANR. Uh, and just a heads up, well, Judy, I basically wanted to confirm that the floodplain bylaw revision, we believe is in the hands of Sylvie Jensen, right? To sort of chart the course forward on where we're, what we're gonna do about that. Well, Sylvie, I sent her the background information that I had and she said that she was going to get together with Brian I suggested they get together with Scott Jackson. Okay. Who, and I haven't heard, and I was hoping she'd be here tonight so we could either get an update or, or a little nudge. But All right. So I'm making a, an, an action for myself to follow up with Sylvie to, because I'm very concerned as I think about you potentially stepping down at the end of your term that all the corporate memory and momentum we built on the floodplain bylaw could dissipate. I want to make sure that we don't lose track of that. I remember yeah, you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The other thing she has on her plate is the solar canopy. And the solar canopy, right. And I also remember that we have felt that our overall subdivision regulations need to be overhauled but we need FERCOG support and we periodically try to get DLTA money for that. And is, is that kind of where that stands? I should be looking at- That's where that stands, but that's a huge project for the board. Right. And if you've got all these other things going on, I'm not sure that anybody on the board would have the stamina to do that as well. Probably not, but I wanted to ask. And it's not. Question. It's not a trivial. Even Percog can provide guidance, but it really takes a lot of time. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move off of this. Um, Brand, uh, Brand, yes, Tom. I think Dan, Dan had his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Dan. Oh yeah, I just wanted to say I have to head to dinner now, but I want to thank you all for your time and uh, okay. I'll see you in January. Very right. brave of you. Good night, to thank you. Enjoy your dinner. Bye -bye. You could you too could be not going to dinner now, but staying on for the rest of this meeting. So think about that. I'll be waiting for your email. Okay. <laughs> you won't wait so long. long, I assure you. <laughs> all right, have a good right. night. All right. Um I want to just let you all know about, I've been asked by Brian to submit a planning board budget for 
the next fiscal year, FY25. Um, and I guess I'm, and I have to do that by the end of December. Uh, I will do my best to do that. I'll, so it's sort of a heads up to Mary, I'm trying to get actuals for the current fiscal year. So make sure you're getting your invoices in. And if you're going to speak, you should unmute or just merely nod or give me a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, that works too. I've been mostly coughing, <laughs> but I will unmute to say, yes, I understand. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, cause I got some numbers about FY23 that ended last June that puzzled me. And so I'm doing some follow-up, but what I want to make mention, and this is more for probably more for JD's benefit is, mm -hmm. is that, um, I, I usually try to put in a little bit of money in the budget for these low cost training opportunities, like a $20 or whatever through the citizens planning, training. Mm -hmm. So you may, so you can just deeply enjoy your experience on the board and uh, you may want to have access to some of these. Usually they're like one or two hour Zoom workshops that come at a nominal cost. But I just want you to be aware that we're going to, I'm trying to make sure we have some money so you don't have to pay for those sorts of um, experiences out of pocket. Okay. All right. That's all I'm going to say about our budget because it's not super exciting. Um, let's do approval of minutes. Uh, I will just where, yeah. So I looked, yeah. go ahead, Sarah. Oh, you're going to share the minutes. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I can say I read them. This was the very exciting, it was a very exciting meeting in um, May, but I didn't see anything that struck me as not accurate based on my memory. I got quoted a lot, so. Uh, did I have an initial thing. It's Bill Orlowski. Bill Orlowski, not Phil. Oh, yeah, yeah. and it's Bill really Orlowski, no, 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 yeah, Phil. Okay. That was the only thing I caught, as well as one typo where probably was written as probable, but I thought, excellent job, Mary. Yeah. And did Jane go to that meeting? As yeah, the Jane, abutter? Jane was the abutter who commented. Abutter to the West. I had a yeah. name for Jane. All it said was Jane. I think Jane Gripko. Gripko. Jane Gripko. Yeah, G-R-Y-B-K-O. No, I should, I should put her in then. Yeah, Janie was there. Okay. Good. Could you scroll that up, Sarah? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. She's Jane is the abutter to the west. Yeah. Right here. Oh yeah, the a Christian Lane abutter should be replaced with Jane, Jane Ribco, comma, a Christian Lane abutter, comma. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> and Phil Orlowski becomes Bill Orlowski. Yep. You can keep scrolling. I, the conditions were accurate to my recollection. He hasn't completed them all, but yes, of course, the building's nowhere near done either. It's, I can't even tell if there's really any significant work going on there. I'm he thinking. has been in the last couple of weeks. Okay. I mean, I know he did some work with the, the maple tree. Um, yeah, he took down the dead one. Yeah. But he has not trimmed the one that blocks the site of view. So the one that I want trimmed. <laughs> and keep scrolling. Yeah, and then that was the whole thing with the MCTC and their proposal and the crazy voting scheme I put you all through. <laughs> so nice job, Mary, capturing all the motions that were made and failed. Uh, I know. I'll... 
And it's like, really, I did that to them? So sad. Um, and yet you elected me chair. Huh. You're, that's bad that's on your you. Punishment. That's your punishment. Then. Yeah, that's right. I guess so. It's definitely as I, as I discovered. So um, I would love to hear a motion to approve these minutes uh, with uh, revisions that we've discussed. I will motion make that. Approve. Okay. So that was Tom. And I'll second it. Okay. And Sarah has seconded the motion. Okay. Yeah, um, and JD, you're actually allowed to vote. Um, you know, you don't have to abstain. I'm going to call on you first. How can he vote on something he didn't? It, wasn't there. it turns out, as I've learned, you know, as long as you've read the minutes, you can just vote to approve them as minutes of the meeting. You don't necessarily have to <laughs> vote to say I was there and I. But wouldn't voting. that be if he was on the board at the time? <laughs> You know, I was as a member of the Frank, the regional planning board, I've been asked to vote on things. Well, I guess I was a member of the board. So let's just call it. If JD, JD wants to vote on it. Yeah. We'll, we'll leave you off. We I'm gonna read you. He was a <laughs> non member who didn't attend. Okay. I'm going to reduce myself. I was not there. There, forget it. All right, we'll just do this. Uh, Judy. Uh, Tom. Yes. Sarah. Yes. And I'm I. So four, essentially unanimous. All right. And that's minutes are approved. OK, a um, couple other quick things at the very end of my notes. Um, so FERCOG is still working on a new zoning math that incorporates the revisions to the aquifer protection overlay district. So they haven't forgotten about it, but we don't yet have a new zoning map that we could even have a hearing about or take to the town, but they're, but they, they pledged before the end of the calendar year. Let's see, um, I am working, I continue to periodically nudge um, the, those who need to be nudged to get the zoning details added to the online map. They're not yet there, but again, not forgotten, but not yet accomplished. We have, uh, I have a, I've been given a key to town offices and I have a, I have a spare key. I'd like to get one of you, the volunteer to be a holder of keys to town offices in case we need to, um, even do a hybrid meeting there. Uh, and let me give you a little bit of background. The town clerk has, and has taken the position and I've agreed that we are reverting now to the original rules and the bylaws that say that site plan applications are to be accepted by the planning board at regular planning board meetings, that they don't wanna be just having people walk in and drop off site plan applications. It, we've gotten into troubles where they've stamped things, where the site plan application materials were not complete. It's created other issues. They kind of don't want to be responsible for that. And so, so they've also created a room in the town offices where the assessor used to have their office. That room is now being converted into a second conference room, but also designated as the um, land use board office, meaning that we can use it as planning board, zoning can use it, and maybe that's the only two. Conservation um, Commission. Concert, thank you, Judy, Conservation Commission. So we have a room, they're setting it up with the appropriate technology so people could be there at town offices in that room, do Zoom, and, the, and then we could have <clears throat> hybrid meetings with the same level of effectiveness that they do it now with select board meetings, for example. So that's still a bit of a work in progress, but <clears throat> if we need to have a regular planning board meeting, 
where we've been alerted that somebody seeks to um, do what they, you know, apply or submit their materials at a regular planning board meeting, then one of us, and it could be me, I'm not that far, but I'd like to have somebody being a backup to be able to have a key if, if I can't be there for whatever reason and we need somebody to be able to get into down offices. And I was wondering, Sarah, if you could be that person. I'm physically closest, if that makes any difference. Yeah, I was sort of thinking that. So I will arrange out of this meeting to get you this key. Um, Don has returned his key. So now I and, and Sarah will possess uh, keys to town offices for this purpose. And we can get in to that, that room when we need to. Um, a little bit about recruiting for board positions. I will say, Tom, so Tom, your plan is this is our last dance together with you on the board. Is that right? So to speak, yes. So to speak. Um, even though the town moderator seems to think your term goes through June of 2024, but. I, 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 am, signed, I'm, I, I am signed up for a three-year term. But that was contingent upon not being able to find uh, replacement members who could who could create a quorum. Yeah, so, I didn't okay. want to leave the board in a position of not being able to have quorums. Okay, so with four of us, me, JD, Judy, and Sarah, we have a quorum, but still a, a gap to fill. Judy, you were going to say something. Well, I was going to thank Tom for his service when you were on the last dance bit. Because I think he's done a term. This is his second, his second uh, membership. You know, he was years ago, and he's extended twice, and which is above and beyond. And his comments are always thoughtful and well appreciated. Thank you. And, yeah, I'll be sad to see you go, and. Um... And you'll still be called on for advice. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we still have your email end. address. At the Waitley Inn. I'm open for business. Okay. All right. Deal. Um, where we stand. I, I, I want to say I've enjoyed working with you all. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of collegiality. We've dealt with some naughty issues. I have been doing wonderful work and don't stop. We will take that to heart. And we seemingly got potentially good news tonight with somebody interested in maybe joining the board. So I will talk to Dan Hurwitt. I did. Um, maybe we should discuss if he hasn't even lived in town yet. Well, obviously I'm not going to, the way this is going to work, whether it's Dan or anybody else, and this has worked out clarified between me and the town moderator. First of all, the town moderator, let's be honest, is not out pounding the pavement looking. I understand. No, my point is just, I was appointed after I had lived here for two years and I thought that was too soon, but I well, had had a long experience with Whiteley growing. We were, you know. we were still unpacking boxes when we were moving in and Paul Florio was in, at knocking at the door. <laughs> okay. Sounds like well, as another, as another an outside example. perspective is always good, but um, just just a word of caution. And I was asked on the board in 2020, having moved to Waitley in 2017. I mean, that's more than that's you know, two or three years versus like zero. But at least I will have a conversation. Oh, and sure, I will sure. Share back with all of you what I learn. Um, and, and if, we can go if he's there. still willing to do it after tonight's meeting, that would be heroic. <laughs> I could, you know, sort of suggest that an A&R may or may not. No. <laughs> um, Lynn Sibley did politely decline. That's sad. Maybe later we'll, we'll try again. But right now there's no other uh, candidates. Uh, Sarah? I saw Chris Kellogg in town. And he's dealing with some family. He said, not right now, yeah. but in the future, possibly he's got some family stuff going on. So. Okay. okay. Um, 
my sister-in-law is interested. I don't know if there's a conflict with her being my sister-in-law, but she has a background in um, soil conservation. She works for the federal government administering farm loans, and she deals with land use issues all the time. College educated. She's very bright. She's a native of Ipswich. She's been married to my brother for a half a dozen years, but she's interested. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I've never thought about the issue of, uh, could I, I mean, it's not, it's not, a, it's not an issue. Yeah. Why would it be? I mean, I don't see conflicts um, of interest or. She deals with farming and agriculture all the time. Farmers trying to get money to um, enhance their farms. She does a lot of that. Is her name Ross? Yeah, Laura Ross, actually. She's married to my brother, Alex. Just out of curiosity, what area of town does she reside in? She lives next to my folks up on Haydenville Road. Oh, my, bro okay. built, my brother and her built a house up there and then they got married. Because we're going to have some more West Whiteley representation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, absolutely. That's where I was going with the question. It brings an agriculture um, perspective to the job, an agricultural background to this. So that's kind of good. JD, you're like the gift that keeps on giving. So why don't you ask? I could send you her email address and you can interview her like you did with me. I would be delighted to do that. Okay. Having having options. Um is great. Okay, good. Oh God, I'm so happy. <laughs> I didn't think I, I would be so happy. Um, I don't know that I have anything else. Are there? And it's now seven oh four. And Dan went to dinner. Like, don't we deserve that? Uh, any other business that anybody? We we know when we're next meeting on Wednesday, January third. We're doing it without Tom, so there will be tears. Oh, God, yes. I did want to do that award business, but maybe we bump that to January 3rd. Mm -hmm. We might we have that? another one to add to it. Yeah, we might. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, we're going to bump that to January 3rd. Because I know we're also trying to get information. So Judy, I want to make sure for Peggy, we we get her appropriate name. Like, does she go by Peggy? Would that be the name on it? And do we okay. know how to deliver such a thing to her? Like, do we have a surface mail or you know some address? Because what I normally would do, like when we do this in the Appalachian Mountain Club. It's a, you know, I, I, we make a personal visit, we drop it off, we get the picture, put it on our website. And I would, I would do that with Judy. Or, I mean, Judy and I, we could go meet up with Peggy. I could go do this with Don if I can, we can get, but that. Okay, I'll work on that. Okay, sounds good. All right, then um, unless there are other burning issues, then, I hear a motion to adjourn. I think that's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do I hear a second? Second. Okay, you can't second your own motion. And I believe by the, by the rules that you don't actually have to have a vote to adjourn. You just have a motion and a second and we are adjourned. All right. Yay. This is like my first meeting where I did this from beginning to end. So yay for me. We'll see Merry you. Merry Christmas, on... everybody. Or happy Merry holidays. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Enjoy your holidays. Happy holidays. We'll see you on January 3rd. All right. Thank you. Bye now. Good night. <laughs>